I have been waiting a long time to show you this plane. I came up with this one because the cost of router planes just went so astronomically high and yet it's such a fundamental piece of equipment for my work. So what I want to do is show you quickly how it works. I've got a recess for a hinge here. I've set the plane. It's taking off a fraction of a millimeter and there it is. A perfect recess. What about this one? This is a housing, so if I was letting in a piece of metal into this on the side of my bolt, on the toolbox lid with my name in it, something like that. It could be an inlay piece. I can trim it to get the, side, the height perfect. On this one here, this is a deep recess, so I'm taking the blade down. One of the wonderful things about this plane is once you've taken it down, you really don't have to alter anything from there on because you can just take it down in increments. So I'm taking this down to that 3 8 depth just to show you how it works on deep recesses. Once I'm down, you'll hear it kissing the surface in the sec. There, it just kissed the surface. I'm locking this off now. Watch this. Look, look, look. In three swipes, I've got the recess down. If I go down a quarter of a turn, It'll take down another level and I just keep going down until I've got the final depth that I want. It's perfect for that. This is like it's, this is like it's been planed with a number four plane. On this one here, it's too deep. So I'm just going to back off my iron just a tad and I'm going to surface plane my tenon. And that's just taken off that thousandth, thousandth of an inch that I wanted to plane up the surface. So this plane is made from nuts and bolts you can pretty much get off the shelf. There's nothing particularly special until you get to the cutting iron and that's very simple to make. You make it from a piece of wood, you can make it from plywood, you can use bought knobs or you can turn your own knobs. It's very easy to assemble, it doesn't take that long to make and it's a lifetime tool. One of the wonderful things about this is that you can make it from scraps of wood, you can buy special wood, you can customize the plane, you can make it longer, wider, deeper, whatever you want. And I'm gonna teach you how to make this plane. That's the main reason. I don't just teach you how, uh, what I've got, I want to teach you how to make it, how to do it. This is what my uh, quest throughout the years has been. It's always about helping you to do your woodworking. This router is gonna be the best router you've ever used. I'll be using this for the rest of my life. I've got all my components for my router plane laid out. This is what we're going to make. This was the first one I ever made. I made it out of a spruce 2x4 stud or a 4x2 stud, depending on which continent you live on, and it worked straight away. Uh, so the problem I think with using a soft, a soft wood is it mushes a little bit, and that's not what we want. So I've gone with some beech, and I just happen to have some very nicely figured beach here you don't need that just go with regular beach that's very traditional for uh, plane making anyway in Britain and in America so I've got my beach ready I've got my two pieces of wood I've got my um, ad knurled adjusters I've got some caps for my handles these will go into the top of each handle I've got two plain Jane door knobs that I bought from a box store, a big box store. I'm gonna show you how to modify those to work with this particular kit. I've got screw bolts here that I bought on uh, from a, you can get them from a big box store or you can buy them online. A series of washers, a piece of mild steel uh, and a piece of tool steel, uh, 10 mil by 10 mil, 3 8 by 3 8 works perfectly fine. And, um, and that's where we are, we're ready to start cooking with gas, hopefully. So I've got my base piece, that's this piece, which is the sole, and we're gonna put a hole in here. We've got to start doing some measurements for this. So I've got the overall length of my piece is nine and a half inches, and it's three and three quarters wide, and it's one inch thick. Now, I've worked out you can go mildly under that one inch. I've gone down as much as three quarters of an inch. You've got to remember that when you put your anchor bolts in for holding the handles, for holding the adjusters and everything else, you're narrowing that margin of, of, um, of thread you can get into it. I think the one inch is perfect. If you can get that, you're well underway to having a perfect plane. 
So I'm going to find the center of my soul, oh, uh, which is going to be four and three quarters. Is that right? Just check yourself, check yourself. Make sure you're not just listening to me. There's my center line. I'll go across here. This will be my reference line throughout. I've already marked this for the back of the plane. I didn't think this was particularly attractive. I did think that was attractive. And then I found another piece that has similar coloring and figuring in here. So I'm going to use this piece. I've got some cracks in here, but I loved all these different flames that are going through. So I'm going to take a chance on that. I'm going to come two inches from the back edge and I'm going to put a crosshair on there because I'm going to put a one and a quarter inch hole through here. And I'm using a paddle bit because I could use a drill press with a Forstner bit in, that would give me a perfectly neat hole, but I just didn't want to rely on that. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm, you'll see me using this technique a few times now. I'm gonna take a three millimeter bit. Now I'm gonna give measurements in millimeters for the metal work and for the drill bits that I'm using, probably. I may stray a little bit because I sometimes do that, but I'll try to do my best not to. So I'm gonna put a pilot hole in here because it's easier to steer this bigger bit. If the point is going through a pilot hole, I have a stronger chance of getting through it being square or perpendicular to this face. So what am I looking for? I want my awl just to get started right on the crosshairs. Make sure I'm in the middle. Nudge it over if I'm not. We're going to drill a hole all the way through. Am I going to drill from one side? I'm not sure. I've got uh, another piece of sacrificial wood. Here's a piece of plywood. I'll just pull this in, I think, will I? Yeah, that'll work. So I can drill all the way through from one side. I may change my mind. I do things like that. So I'm going to drill a little start to the hole here. Now I can tell if I'm perpendicular one way, but not the other way usually. So this is what I've got. I've got a piece of wood. I'll tell you how I got there. I put a channel in the piece of wood. I took my drill bit, placed it on the wood off center like this. I just took a knife, marked both sides of it, both sides of it. And then I got the depth of it here and I cut across the grain, cut across the grain, went down to my depth and chiseled with a one eighth chisel from both sides and that got me the depth. And then I took some super glue and I glued the two halves together. And then I ran my bit through it and it kept it perpendicular and kept it dead square. And that was the important part because we want to be dead square with this pilot hole. And we'll be using this bit all the way through this project at different points. So I got my hole started and then I drilled through Pop this into the hole, and then if you just simply, I've got this the wrong way up. I've squared my wood, I squared it to the faces. So if I press this now, and I start drilling, I stand a greater chance of getting it square. I've got enough shank out. I'll go a little bit deeper. There I am, I'm through. Hopefully that will be somewhere where I need to be. And now I take the paddle bit, one and a quarter or 32 mil. And I'm gonna drill through to this backer board. Little shave in there. Like this, just to take up the slack and sometimes I might use a clamp as well because see I've got a gap there so it's a good idea just to add an additional pressure on this side up here and I'll just drill into that now oh one thing somebody asked me uh, you know why don't I use somebody here asked me why I don't use a one and a quarter inch brace and bit I did use one on one of my prototype and boy, it beat me to death. Every time I tamed one turn, it took all the strength that I could do. And this is even gonna make this 
uh, uh, flag a little bit. Oops, I just changed my notches here a little bit. I don't want to move, there we go. Hmm, changed my super duper drill out for one exactly the same. Changing my speed down, am I? There we go. There's quite a lot of pressure on this. I guess that's that. Some days are like Mondays, aren't they? I guess I'm through. This is a wonderful part of this project. Is you're making this hole. My hole came out nice and neat. I got a little bit of fraying, but it's on on the exit hole not, and it's not a problem. So I've got a very nice, it looks very nice. I'm very happy with that. Now we come to the next piece. This is going to be a, a little bit uh, intimidating, but don't let it intimidate you. So that's the back. So this piece goes on the back. And what I want is a piece that's five and a half inches long, but I've left it this length for good reason. So what we're going to do, I've got this, these three quarters by about two inches, but it will be a lot less by the time I've finished. Let's put this on end in the vise. Now the angle that I've got, I did work on several different angles and I went from 45 to 55 degrees and tried the planes, tested them out to see how they felt in different woods and I ended up at 50 degrees. I felt that 50 degrees was just about as good as it gets. The reason was, if I go at a lower angle, if I go at 45 degrees, that pushes the tip of the blade forward considerably to where you can't actually see the tip of the blade as you get to a deeper, say you were going a three quarters of inch deep, you can't see the fore edge of the blade. So I decided a 50 and it didn't make any noticeable difference to the functionality of the plane. So let me get my protractor. I've got this and this is what I did. I made this out of three pieces of just plastic sign material so I could get a smaller um, uh, sliding bevel and I've set this to 55, uh, no to 50 degrees, 50 degrees and I'm making a pencil line across here and this is going to be the fore edge so I've gone from the corner, flip over and do the exact opposite from this side. So go right on the corner. That will give you the line that we're going to cut to. You can use your finger as a guide or you could set your, your sliding combination square like this. You could set this to that distance and make your line along the length more accurately if you think it's going to be more accurate using this and then just slide this along. Actually, <laughs> it is more accurate. No, no. And then we're gonna slide the saw in there. Now we're gonna slide the saw in. I thought about using the saw and I didn't actually use a saw on any of mine. What I did is I put this in the vise, but then I thought about using a clamp in the vise and that worked best of all because it meant I could have the piece of wood on the level, is that gonna work? Yeah. Like this. Just set it above the jaw on your line and get it as level as you can. Get it nice and tight 
and then lock it down into the vise. Now, in this case, I have to lock it into my jaws, so I can't make any further adjustment for tightening on there. Then I took a converted number 78 scrub plane and took off the bulk of the waste like this. To get it down. So this hogs off quite a lot of wood. That's in the American vernacular. Hogging off is a technical term. I'm going with another converted scrub here. This is a shallower scrub. But Having said all that, you can do the whole lot with either a saw, a hand saw, rip it down close to your line, and then go with a number four. And it doesn't, it doesn't be, it's not gonna be much different time-wise. I'm staying parallel to the surface, working to, near to my line. And I've got some beautiful colouring on there, but unfortunately it's disappearing with every stroke the nearer I get to depth. Will I have enough? Looking at my line on the top, looking on the end, this angle will affect the presentation of your blade, you see. Because we're going to put a groove in here going across here, parallel to this surface. So this will be your registration face for 45. Okay, let's take a look. There. Uh, not 45, 50 degrees, not 45, sorry. Look at that. It's so perfect. I, I'll even point this to the camera. There you go. It's perfect. So that's that one. And we have another one to do. But first of all, before we go to the next one, we're going to put this in the vise here. Tighten it up again. Now this, this is going to be the top edge of my router plane. This is this edge here. So I haven't cut the back edge yet because what we're going to do is we're going to put a groove in here and it's going to be just shy of 10 millimeters deep. And um, I say just shy and the reason I'm saying that is because my steel comes in the metric size. So it's 10 millimeters. So what I want to do is decide, hang on, let me go back to my piece of wood here. I'm comparing what wood I've got, this grain. I do like this area here. So I'm going to start from one end. If this end is square, I'll be cutting this down to five and a half eventually. But I've left it longer. It's near enough square. I've left it longer so I can work it in the vise and you'll see why in a little while. So this piece is gonna be five and a half. So the middle of that is going to be two and three quarters, right? So I come in two and three quarters. That's my center line. Where's my little square? Now I don't have a square edge to register again here, but if I press the blade against the surface of that four edge, and then I slide this down and let the stock of the square register on this top edge, I can move this across to that center line and I can press this face of the, the blade onto the surface and strike my line. And now I'll put another one here just to help me. We're gonna go down about 9.45 millimeters, uh, 9.9 uh, .9 millimeters for the depth. If we go too far, say we went to 10 and a fraction of a millimeter, then we just come back in and we plane a little bit more off this surface so that when our fingertips go across the surface, we can feel a slight rise when we hit that uh, back of the blade. 
So that's the reason, I mean, I'll explain that or you probably already worked it out as you go, but this is what we're doing. Since that tight, either side of that line, we're going to go five millimeters. Where is my metric ruler going? There it is. So get this dead on. We'll work, we're going to work very, very accurately. I'll tell you what, I'm going to go on this side of the line, which is my left. Drop that right onto the five mil. Check myself, I'm slightly off. Okay, that's dead square. Square that line across. Just like that. Now don't move your square. Take your metal stock or measure it and bump it up against your square and make the second mark. You can go all across if you're balanced. And that's got exactly the 10 mil that I want for the width of this. So the width has to be exactly the same as steel. Because this steel is going to slide in and out of that when we're done. I need to come down this face. Again, press the blade of the square against the flat face. And come down this face. Now we're going to be cutting this face off. So you can just put a strong line across this face without any problem. The knife wall. The marking gauge set this to ooh, just under the 10 mil. I am a very, very small fraction across. Get the stock registered against that flat face. Now let me turn this, maybe you can see it a little bit more if I turn it up this way. Something like that. No. Can't get in with the stock, maybe there. So it's registered against that face, and I can pull a line like this. Now I didn't stop either side of the line because I'm going to be cutting this face away soon. Okay. We're going to saw down that line. Now, I'm not going to chisel into the face. I'm going to drop my saw right on the back edge and let the saw teeth take away the bulk of the kerf. And then I'm dropping my teeth of my saw right up against the knife wall. That gives me a perfect line. I have very marginal set on my saw. Now I'm dropping my hand and following the knife wall on the top. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to take a very fine Sharpie and we're going to take the steel and set it along the side of the teeth and we're going to have to do a little bit of guesstimating here. So there's the width of the steel and that's going to be my guide for the depth of cut on your side. I'm going to stop there, I just stopped shy of my line. Okay, big chisel. A little room here. Okay, take the top off. That first part there is likely to break off it, and it won't matter. So I'm going down 
towards the inside corner. Didn't, oh, it did, no, it didn't break off. I'm keeping it flat on this, on this side of the, of the sole. And I'm almost down into the corner. Come here. Little challenge this, but it's good. Great, and then a narrow chisel. Will a 10 mil fit? It does, just about. I'm gonna go with a narrower one, quarter inch. Take the ridge off and shoot for the stars. Go up, in other words, away from you. I'm going to go down. I'm about a sixteenth off my line, something like that. Now I'm going directly into my gauge line. So I'm I think I'm in my gaze line. I have to guess at this sometimes. There we go. And now we're going to offer our steel into there, and that will help us to evaluate how deep we've gone, if it will go in. So it's a pretty good fit, but it's a little tight. That might do it. Okay, I'm, I'm fairly close to being parallel to the surface. I'm higher on your side, so I've got to take that down. And now it's just a question of paring down, but I want to stay parallel to the surface. And the only way I can really do that until I finish this router is by touch, really. Okay, so that's taking it down a little bit more. Um, a bit more to get it parallel to the surface. I'm aiming for parallel to the surface first, and I'm using the flat aspect of the chisel, the wide face, or the straight face, the other, this side of the chisel, to register against that to keep it straight. And now I feel like I'm straight all the way across. Will I go with a wider chisel? I may well do. Now this is just guesstimating, am I level? Well, we do have that inside us. It is in us to do this. Oh, this is perfect. I'm a little high on your side again, but not too, not very much. I could actually leave it at that. So I've got, I have the perfect groove now. I'm equal, I think I'm equal on both sides. The walls will help me because I am square. And if I have a, a gap on one side and not the other, then I would say that my baseline is not perfectly square. I have a slight gap. Well, I'm going to correct that now. Again, using the chisel to get the straightness I need. And that's it. That's it. I don't need to do any... Oops! I don't need to do anything more than that. So what I'm going to do now is finish off... I'm going to cut this to length. Am I? Not yet. We've got to still cut the back part of this. We've got to cut that square to that fore edge. Let me show you how we do that. So we just use a square to get the 90 degrees we want. So I'm going to the top of the ridge. And you can, you, you can go directly to that ridge. Like that. That's how it will look. And the same on this side. 
getting this lined up. The internal corner is lined up with that forehead, uh, with that inside corner of my square. If I take this and put a mark here and a mark here, because having planed that front edge, I may not be parallel still. It looks as though I'm fine, but I may not be. Oops. So I'm going to saw down this this time. Which way do I want to go? I'm going to go this way, I think. I'm going to stay away from my line. There, I'm deep enough. And now I'm going to put that distance five and a half inches on here. This edge here, on this edge and this edge, they're not going to be there soon, so I'm going to cross cut this to length. But I'm going to transfer the line onto this underside because I don't want any furry bits of breakout because that will spoil the glue line that I'm looking for. I'm going to put this in this way so I can cross cut. got to plane this how am I going to do that back to the clamp in the vise or if your vise has got wide jaws like this we can go this way it's just fine I'm looking for grain direction which is kind of hard with this uh, grain pattern on the surface I do suggest you sharpen up your plane before you begin any of these because especially if you're using beach beach demands a sharp plane I'm going to check myself I'm not doing too well Pretty good. Now, two shavings got me where I need to be pretty well. I 
I like this. I love it. I love this. Okay. So this is going to go on here. I've got my center line down in the bottom there. I've got a couple of things to do to this piece of wood. I want to glue this on so I can leave it to dry for an hour and go and have my lunch or whatever else. So I want this centered on here so I'm equidistant from each end, which will be, for me, it'll be two inches. There I am. And I, I can see my center line right down in the middle of the recess there. I'm flush at the back edge. I'm making a knife wall. Oops, that's not what you want. I'm making a knife wall here and a knife wall here. And then on that leading edge, I'm going to go with a pencil line like that. Great. Okay. What I'm going to do is put a couple of nails in there, small panel pins in here near to the end, not in the middle and not where I'm going to drill. So I'm going to come about three eighths of an inch from the knife wall in from the end and about three eighths in from the front edge on this one. And I'll do the opposite at this end, three eighths in from the end. Oops, I want a bit more. Until that nail feels solid, take a pair of uh, pliers or whatever you have that can cut these off. Tap them in. They don't need to protrude very much, just a little bit. Make sure you get this the right way up, get it centered, get it onto your knife walls. That looks perfect. Bang. And bang. That's your registration now. When you glue up, they won't slip. What we're going to do is we're going to put a radius on here. When, if you, when you're using your plane, you've got your two handles on here like this, your knuckles are going to catch on these areas here. But I want the length of that because that's got the bolts going into it. So I want those to stay in it, to give the extra strength I need for round the bolt hole. Just bring this up as high in the vise as you can get it. Take your Shinto rasp if you've got one. If you don't, you can do this with a chisel, a rasp, any other kind of rasp. Take this down, it's around 45. Get the bulk of it out of the way with the coarse side. Just like that. Let me show you what I've got. Just took a straight bevel, similar to the one that's at the front. Now I'm going to go, and I'll do the same at the other end. Now I'm going to start shaping. So I'm lifting my hand, so I'm causing a round over here now. Now I'm on the coarse side of the rasp. So I'm not going too near to that edge. I'm about an eighth of an inch away. Drop my hand down here, take off more, flip over and clean up on it a little bit. Now I can go right into the edge gently. Now this is the leading edge. This is the front edge. So I'm taking this off in a round. Watch this corner. This corner here is going to break off if you're not gentle. Just round it and follow the radius round. I'll show you in a minute what I mean. The same on this side. Gently, you, you're not going heavily with this. Now we're going to go with just a flat file. Get as much as you can with the file. This is going to make the plane feel so comfortable when you're using it. Sorry about the vibration. 
can't get tighter in the vice than that. That's how it's going to look. So when this is on the plane, it looks like it's going to look like that and your handle is going to be here. You've got bags of room between your knuckles. It's going to be great. So I do the same at the other end and then I'm going to put this in the vise with some glue between the surfaces and we're good to go. Lifting, lifting, lifting the hand, gently on that top edge, especially with the coarse side, because this rasp is very aggressive on this face. Flip it around, refine it. Get an arcing stroke with your hand onto the top, and then take the hard corner off. Working up and around you may not believe this but we're very near to having the body of the router plane ready to go very very near Ooh. can't go into the vice lower that would stop that uh, harmonic there but I feel sorry for the sound people so there you go finesse it get the two halves looking something like the same and we're good you can sand it if you want to, but be careful if you do not to sand this, uh, sand this bottom edge because it'll destroy the crisp line you're looking for. Wrong way around. There it is. So we go with the glue. And this will last for a hundred years. I want to avoid too much squeeze out on the front edge, oops, on, on the ends, just because it can be hard to remove. So I'm spreading. The back edge you'll be planing anyway, probably. But do get the glue on that leading edge, just to make sure it's not a fractious edge that's unsupported. There it is. Flip over, feel for the nail heads. That's it, that is it. So we leave that now for a good hour and that will give us exactly what we need. Press it firm against one jaw, place the sole firm against the jaw and then apply the pressure like that. Great. Thank you.